Previously on Smart Mobility Today, we covered stories about aerial flight, sideways driving AVs, agriculture space, and smart cities. This week's stories focus on EV charging, wind, more news from space, robots building solar farms, and spy drones used to combat drought. You've got something to say, and we can help you say it. Detroit Media Productions is here for your audio, photography, and video needs. DetroitMediaProductions.com Hi, this is Cindy Polakowski. As California gets closer to its zero emissions 2030 deadline, EV technology still has to advance in ways that make EV ownership easier. A Sacramento-based company is taking a big leap in that direction with the promise of fast EV charging. The company named Gencel is showcasing new capabilities at the Evox Expo, part of the California Mobility Center. Evox stands for Electric Vehicle Operational Extender. And the demonstration is a mobile charging unit capable of powering 20 to 30 cars a day. The process takes minutes instead of hours, and the mobile unit has the option of drawing from all kinds of power sources. According to a company representative, quote, you have the ability to have four energy inputs, solar, wind, grid, and fuel cell. And this gives you the ability to have the energy resiliency. Because what happens when the power goes offline? On the other coast, EV buyers in Rhode Island can now get reimbursed for installing a charger. In an effort to encourage EV purchases, the program offers rebates that will cover most or all of the costs involved in residential charging. The program, called Power Up RI, is launching this month and will provide rebates of up to $700 for homeowners and landlords to install electric vehicle chargers, plus another $300 for low to moderate income applicants. On top of that, a federal tax credit, equal to 30% of the total cost, up to $1,000, is also available. A California startup working with an aerospace firm is developing batteries using a new lithium sulfur battery formula. Compared to current battery technology, the company, called Lighten, says that its lithium sulfur batteries are lighter, have twice the energy density as today's batteries and promise a 70% reduced carbon footprint. The first step, powering combat drones, could pave the way for use in consumer products like cell phones, laptops, and EVs, charging them more quickly and needing to recharge them less often. According to the company, quote, this is the first ever commercial application for a lithium sulfur battery in North America and Europe and may be one of the first worldwide. Lighten will provide the lithium sulfur battery cells to power drones made by Avex Aerospace. Delivery is planned by the end of the year. The Biden administration is expected to issue a rule barring Chinese software for AVs in the U.S., operating at level three autonomy or higher. The impact of the rule would also ban testing of autonomous vehicles produced by Chinese companies on U.S. roads, According to Reuters, the U.S. Commerce Department will also propose barring vehicles with Chinese-developed advanced wireless communications technology and will require that U.S. automakers and suppliers verify that none of their connected or autonomous vehicle software was developed in a, quote, foreign entity of concern, specifically China. Looking for better ways to manage your IT, phone systems, or remote workforce? Improve your organization using technology that works for you. PSNTechnology.com Danish renewables company Orsted is deploying heavy lift cargo drones for the first time, transporting cargo at a Dutch offshore wind farm. The drone will move cargo from a vessel to 94 wind turbines. The 154-pound drones have a wingspan of 8.5 feet and move cargo weighing up to 220 pounds. The operation will include updating evacuation and safety equipment in each of the offshore wind turbines. Before using drones, vessels would sail from one wind turbine to the next, using a crane to lift each box onto a platform and then to the top of the turbine. Now, the heavy lift cargo drones will fly back and forth from an offshore supply vessel directly to the top, taking about four minutes per turbine, an improvement over the previous six-hour process.
Apparently, not everybody is a fan of offshore wind farms. Activists in the United States are forming a national coalition focused on fighting offshore wind projects. From the West Coast to the East, the National Offshore Wind Opposition Alliance wants to provide a national voice for today's fractured efforts involving dozens of local groups. The progress of the new industry is part of Joe Biden's efforts to combat climate change. The administration's push to install turbines along every U.S. coastline has resulted in opposition in many lawsuits from residents concerned about the industry's impact on tourism, property values, and fishing and marine habitats. A piece in last week's show about Michigan wind farms illustrates how big initiatives have the potential of missing the interests of local communities. According to an organization spokesperson, quote, sometimes the little guy just doesn't get noticed. NASA astronauts originally on a 10-day assignment to the International Space Station may not be coming back to Earth until 2025. While NASA does not like to say that the astronauts are stuck, the two astronauts cannot get home as planned due to issues plaguing the Boeing Starliner craft. The current plan is for them to hitch a ride on the SpaceX Dragon. In June, the Starliner faced a lot of difficulties as five of its 28 reaction control thrusters misfired while docking with the ISS. As work continues on a fix, the idea is to move a planned SpaceX September ISS trip to August send two astronauts instead of four, and bring the Starliner astronauts back home in February 2025. I'm sure we'll be updating this story. <laughs> we will be right back. All right. All right, ready. All right, I'm ready. No, that's fine. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> More water. Right. Right. We'll be All right, right back. Too many. I no. did. Hey, hey, the door. His wife thinks no sense. Okay. Freelancers, gig workers, and entrepreneurs are creating the future of work. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter at WorkShifter.com and follow us at WorkShifter on social media. Across the U.S., companies are busy building solar farms, and they would be in better shape if they could find enough human workers. As we are seeing in various industries, robots are filling in where humans are not available, where the work requires superhuman strength, or where safety is a concern. This week, renewable energy company AES introduced a first-of-its-kind robot capable of carrying and installing the 60-pound panels that make up a typical solar array. The robot, nicknamed Maximo, is about the size of a pickup truck, has a large extendable arm that uses suction cups to pick up and arrange the solar panels using AI and computer vision to position them properly. The company expects that Maximo will be able to install solar panels twice as fast as humans can and at half the cost. They also said they don't want to employ less people, just install twice as many solar fields. In a western region of China, where there has been a long-standing drought, long-endurance strike and reconnaissance drones are being used for cloud seeding trials. The process of inducing rains through artificial cloud seeding involves chemicals like silver iodide and potassium iodide, promoting the formation of water droplets. China used the same technique to control the weather during the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympic Games. A hydrogen-powered chase boat will be deployed in this year's America's Cup. A competition of sailing yachts, the America's Cup is the oldest international competition of any sort still operating. Blue Game, an Italian shipyard, has provided a hydrogen-powered support vessel that will support the yacht American Magic. It is designed with the event's strict requirements in mind. The catamaran will fly across the water on high-tech hydrofoils at speeds of up to 50 knots. Powered exclusively by hydrogen, the multi-hull has a range of 180 miles and will deliver gear to the American Magic crew with zero emissions. Read these stories and more at globalautomobility.com and subscribe to Smart Mobility today on your favorite podcast platform. 
Sign up to receive our weekly newsletter and follow us on social media at Smart Mobility Today. Produced by Detroit Media Productions, this is Smart Mobility Today.